Hello, my name is Mark Magnuson and I'm a plastic surgeon. Body contouring after massive weight loss has become an increasingly common procedure. In Australian communities, the proportion of people who are either in the overweight or obese category are about two thirds of the population. And while obesity is common, and Australia is highly represented in terms of obesity percentages across the globe, there are also enormous numbers of patients who have successfully lost vast amounts of weight. And this starts to cause problems in its own right. So after massive weight loss, there are changes to the body and they're different with everyone. Everyone has different body shapes to start with, has different, some different amounts of weight that they gain and then lose. Some people have skin that holds up and doesn't get a lot of stretch marks and other people get severely affected by stretch marks. So on balance, the same journey can create different problems for different people. But universally, we get loose skin, we get changes to the body that aren't reversed simply by weight loss. And commonly, loose folds cause problems that are associated with health issues that are chronic and ongoing. Issues like chafing with exercise, chafing with certain types of clothing, ulcerations, particularly after an, under an abdominal apron, or associated with the inner thigh, and these problems aren't ever just in one place. They can be all around the body. So it can be in the tummy, the hips, the thighs, the buttocks, the arms, but even the face and neck. So surgery is commonly performed for these patients. And where the looseness in the tummy after pregnancy is often addressed by an abdominoplasty or a tummy tuck, after massive weight loss, frequently the looseness goes all the way around the body and we commonly then think of a body lift procedure. Similarly, looseness in the thighs is addressed by a thigh lift or thigh plasty and in the arms by a brachioplasty. Changes in the breast can be managed in a number of different ways with breast lift predominantly. But for one person over the next, these changes will have a different pattern and also they'll have different priorities. So one of the common questions is, how do I start? Where should I start and what should I do first if I'm going to have several areas addressed? So what does this mean for you? Where should you start if you're going to consider addressing multiple areas? Well, the important thing, the most important thing is to understand what your goals are. Some people will say, I can conceal the problems in my breast with a bra, I can conceal my tummy with clothes, but I can't conceal my arms or thighs and they interfere with what I can wear, particularly in summer. So that might be the priority and that might be the point at which they start, considering surgery to the arms and thighs. Other people might be put off by the shape or, or volume of their breasts and that might be where they start. And for others, they might be considering body surgery and abdominoplasty or body lift is the most common place to start. But I combine a number of different modalities of treatment in any one operation. And again, it's not important about what I can do, it's important about what is on your list of goals. For example, a body lift is a bigger procedure than an abdominoplasty and someone might choose or think that they would rather have an abdominoplasty. But if their list of goals includes improving the shape on the outside of the thigh and in the flank, tightening up the skin there, lifting the bottom, an abdominoplasty won't manage those problems and consequently the outcome won't be perceived as good even if it was completely uneventful with a good outcome. So it is most important not to consider what can be done but what is on your list of goals. And when we sit down in a consultation, we'll talk about what the different elements add to your outcome and if I've done my job well, you will understand what you need and what you desire and it won't be me telling you what you want. So the next of our common questions is, how much weight do I need to lose before I can have surgery or before I'm a surgical candidate? So if the body weight is still in the obese weight range and the higher into the obese weight range, the greater that problem, there is an increase in the risk of complications, particularly things like 
skin healing problems, wound, se wound separation, fluid collecting under the skin uh, as a seroma, and wound infections. These things have the ability to impact the outcome and impact general health. So as this is elective surgery, we need to get people back into the overweight category. That's lower with a BMI lower than 30. Further than that, particularly when we're talking about the tummy or a body lift procedure, frequently for women especially, there's separation of the muscles that may be associated with pregnancies and not just the weight gain, weight loss journey. When we repair those muscles, which is standard for an abdominoplasty and a body lift, there are very substantial functional benefits with increasing core strength, reducing lower back pain, which is very common after pregnancy and this weight loss journey, and also improving bladder control, which is also a common problem for women after having pregnancies. And the more pregnancies, the more that problem tends to be. If the BMI is too high, some of that body fat is actually underneath the muscles in and around the organs in the belly, and we can't actually repair the muscles. So we do an operation that has all the risk, but with none of the most substantial functional benefits. So for abdominoplasty alone, the body mass index needs to be below 32. For body lift, below 30. But in massive weight loss patients, the rate of complications is higher than in women or men who've never lost or gained substantial amounts of weight. So for the massive weight loss patient, frequently drawing the line at a BMI of 30 is necessary for safety. So the next common question is, if I have concerns about more than one body area, can I have more than one area treated at the same time? So to work this out, it depends on age, actual body weight and or BMI at the time of surgery, fitness, and whether there are other medical conditions such as diabetes, heart problems, lung problems, smoking, um, and things like that. But it is common to be able to combine procedures. And abdominoplasty is very frequently coordinated with breast surgery. A body lift, because it's a longer procedure, is usually done on its own, but in young, healthy patients who have reached their goal weight or their normal body weight, we can sometimes combine that with breast surgery as well. It's common to, to combine arms and breasts, and it's common to combine arms and thighs. So these are the sorts of things that are possible to combine. In general though, this is elective surgery and we need to keep things safe. It's not about trying to be heroic and perform marathon procedures to make things efficient. We need to keep it safe and not impact general health. So for most people, these operations will be contained to four to six hours depending on general health. So the next question, how do I know if I'm ready for surgery? And if I'm not ready for surgery, what can I do? So certainly if your BMI is already in the normal, in the normal or the overweight body weight range after your weight loss, then a referral from your GP, you call our practice, make a time and we'll see you. And you'll be see me in a consultation where we go over all of this stuff and create a bespoke plan for you. If your body weight is still above the obese weight range, and you're looking to get more information or even further assistance, then you phone our practice, you can talk with our surgical nurse and she will sit down with you. She'll give you some more resources about weight loss and in fact, we can get you in touch with dietitians with interest in this area, exercise physiologists and psychologists, all of whom can help create that circumstance where you can achieve natural weight loss. And in my practice, about a third of patients have done this process all on their own, losing their weight naturally. And about two thirds have undergone bariatric surgery, that's weight loss surgery. Procedures like gastric sleeve and gastric bypass. 
They are not plastic surgery procedures and I do not perform those. However, depending on whereabouts you live in southeast Queensland, we certainly have relationships where we have shared patients with a significant number of bariatric surgeons and we can even point you in that path if that's where you wish to go. So again, if you've got questions, if you've got concerns, if you're uncertain, the easiest thing to do in the first instance is call our practice and talk to our surgical nurse.